Well, you know it's a big tournament when we have to call in the big names and few <laughs> get bigger in cricket than Mikey Holding, who's joining me right now. And few tasks in cricket get bigger than winning a World Cup on home soil. That's the task that's been given to this England squad. And trust me, many believe they can do it given the pressure on them. Mikey, they play South Africa in the opener right here at the Oval come Thursday. How important is it for them to start off with a win? Well, first of all, thanks for the compliment, Alexis. <laughs> and it's very, very important. England have never ever won a World Cup. It's so important for them to start this game, winning the game and carrying on through the entire tournament because they need the support of the people here in England. Not that the people here in England won't support them if they, if they lose the first game, but they need to start on the right note. It's a home tournament. They haven't won, they need to win, so they need to start well. And there is a lot of hype surrounding them, so I suppose that could silence, I guess, some of the naysayers, if there are even any here in England. But it's, I read somewhere, of course, that it has been around two years since England have played South Africa in the one-day format. Last time England did, though, come out victorious. But, you know, things can happen in two years, Mikey. So yep. how do they approach this match against Proteus? Well, what they have to recognize is that they have a long batting lineup. Alexis, I don't see any team in this World Cup that bats as deep as England. And yes, South Africa have a fantastic bowling lineup. They have some fantastic fast bowlers. And of course, Imran Tahir has done well with the ball as a spinner. But England just need to recognize their batting lineup. I would suggest that they chase, first of all, get South Africa batting so that they know exactly how many runs they need to get. And with that batting lineup, they should get them. That should be the start, that should be the thought process going in. Obviously, if they lose the toss and South Africa decide that they are going to make England bat first, then they have to adapt. Well, you spoke about England's batting. Let's talk quickly about the bowling now. Something that you know how to do very well, especially with some pace. And that is where all the focus is with this England team. Who are the two other pace bowlers that go with Chris Wokes on this one? It is a tough decision for them to make, but one that I'm sure many teams would love. But who would be your picks? Well, there has been so much talk about Jofra Archer. I understand. I didn't see the first game that he played for England, but I understand he was a little bit nervous and that can be understood. But I also understand that he got better as time went on. Now, if he's on top of his game, he has pace. I think he's the second quickest bowler in this tournament. They have to go in with him. Pace will disturb anyone. Not pace that's flying all over the place. But he has control along with that place. So they have got to go along with him. So I would suggest that Jafra uh, Archer should play. Well, interesting you say that then, because we did speak to Joe Root, I believe it was just about last week, and he knows exactly a thing or two about captaining a side. And he says what people need to remember is that as great as Joffre is, he still is not the finished article sure. at all. And you, of course, were his age once, Mikey, and this is a big stage. You know, what would you be saying to him um, ahead of this match? Well, the thing is, Alexis, times have changed. 1975, when the West Indies came to England for the first ever World Cup, I was supposedly on the fringes of playing for the West Indies. But the selectors and the captain at the time thought, no, he's young, he's inexperienced, we're not going to take him to the World Cup. We'll take him to Australia, send the 576. That no longer applies. People play so much cricket these days that before they get to the international stage, they have a lot of cricket under their belts. Geoffrey Archer might be young, inexperienced, but he has a lot of cricket under his belt. And I don't see any problem with him starting off in the very first game. It's not going to be easy, but he has to dip his toe into the water at some point. And he has the pace, he has everything that can bother batsmen, so throw him in. Throw him in the deep end first, that's exactly what they'll do. But let's talk about South Africa now, because I feel like they've been sort of flying under the radar going up in this tournament. Of course, we know that Australia has, you know, a storyline there. England being England, basically, but they yeah. still are the number three one-day team in the world. So what are you expecting from them? Where are they most dangerous? I watched... South Africa for 13 overs against the West Indies in one of the warm-up games. And one of the gentlemen I thought perhaps might struggle in this tournament is Hashim Amla. And he looked on top of his game. If Hashim Amla and Quinton de Kock bat as well in this tournament as I saw them bat in those 13, 14 overs at, at Bristol, they will get a fantastic start. And that is what they need to do. Get a good start, get runs on the board early because they bat not as deep as, say, England. That's why they need such a good start and at a good rate. So that is what I think South Africa will be concentrating on. They have good bowlers, as I mentioned earlier on. They have some good fast bowlers. But as we know, in this form of the game these days, good bowlers can still go for a lot of runs. When I played, if I went for 45 runs in my 10 overs, I felt embarrassed. That's fantastic bowling these days. The batting has changed. The attitude has changed. So that's what South Africa have to do. Get runs on the board. 
All right, thanks so much there to Mikey Holing. I'm sure we will definitely catch up plenty throughout this World Cup. Hopefully the weather changes and can suit our West Indian blood a little more and we'll be able to stand out here a lot longer. But for now, England have the task of defeating South Africa in the opening match. We'll see if they can indeed pull that off.